Okay, so we are going to talk about what's called the common ion effect. Notice this is also one that is a supplemental text. Um, but essentially, this is if you don't have a pure substance or you have something else in there that is not just the acid or the base that could affect the pH. So um, a weak acid in water, we know we get some HA, we get some H plus and some A minus, right? So in water, I get HA, I get H plus, I get A minus. All of those things are floating around in there. Well, what if I put this into a solution that already had some H plus or some A minus in it? How would that affect the pH? Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is called, this is called a common ion. Common um, ion, because it is an ion that is common to your acid that you already have in there or the acid that you're going to put in there. Okay. Um, so if it's already in the solution, this is a common ion situation. Okay. And when you add something in that is part of that ice table, it's actually going to affect it, right? Le Chatelier's principle says if I add something in, it's going to shift to the other side. So if I added either HA or something with H plus or something with A minus, it is going to affect that equilibrium, which is also going to in turn affect pH. So remember Le Chatelier's principle, if I have this, so I have a weak acid in water, this is my equation, right? H3O plus and a minus, if that's what I have in, and then say I added something else in that has one of these things in it, it's going to shift, okay? Um, so I'm going to put that, that's going to be our kind of like guiding principle. It will shift. Okay, now what we're usually going to see is that if I add H A or I add an acid to something that already has like A minus or H plus in it. So if I already had some in here, these values initially are not going to be zero, may not be zero. Okay, so maybe I already have something in there. So if I add H A in, we'll shift, then it's going to end up shifting to the right, right? So we'll shift this way if H A is added. That's how the pH gets affected, and that is we're gonna have to do a new ice table. Thanks, Ben. Okay, so um, there's not as much because the H three plus or the A minus were already there. Now we know it's gonna shift to the right, but since I already have some stuff here, some stuff here, it's like <laughs> oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> Since there's already some stuff in there, <clears throat> it's just not going to shift as much. So we have to take that into account. Now, really, this isn't that complicated. It's just that you also have some stuff already in the I row of your ice table. Okay, so these common ion problems, there's a couple of types of these. Okay, I've got three types here that you will see. Um, if I added a strong acid to a weak acid, okay, so we're adding one acid to another, what kind of happens in that ice table? Um, so that could be a problem. I could add a salt that has a conjugate into it, right? If you've got some of the conjugate, that's going to affect the pH. Or maybe I'm going to partially neutralize something. So strong or weak, um, it's going to end up neutralizing, right? And that's going to affect your pH as well. So these are kind of the three types that we are going to see. We're going to talk about the first one here. Okay. If I add HCl, we should know by now that the Cl isn't actually going to affect my pH at all. Um, this is a strong acid, so Cl minus doesn't do anything. But if I put this in, I'm really just adding H plus. So I have H plus in there. I also have a weak acid in there. Okay, so how does that affect the pH? So if I look at my equation, HC2, H3O2 plus water. So this is my weak acid equation. I get H3O plus and C2H3O. Oops. O2 minus. Okay. I already had this going on. If I added the strong acid, that means I'm adding this. Okay. Right. And if I add some of that in, it's going to shift it to the left. Okay. Now, if I have a strong acid and a weak acid, strong acid and a weak acid, you should know that, of course, the strong acid is going to dominate because it completely dissociates. The weak acid actually hardly dissociates at all and will hardly affect the pH in comparison. So if I have two acids and one of them is strong, all you really have to do is look at the strong acid to determine pH. So the strong acid will determine pH. Okay. 
Um, addition of a salt containing the conjugate base. So this is a common ion uh, situation. We've got here, if I have this acetic acid, right? That's a weak acid. And then I have this. Well, that's not an acid, but you should notice that this is the conjugate base of HC2H3O2 or acetic acid. So that is going to affect the pH, right? I've got this going on again. I'm just rewriting this equation. Got this weak acid in solution. I'm going to add this guy in, and that is also going to affect the pH, okay? So we're going to start with some of that in there in this instance. Or I could do a partial, partial neutralization with a strong acid, and instead of adding something in, maybe I am going to take something out. So I'm going to keep using this as my example, right? If I have this in solution, C, C2H3O2, water, H3O plus and C2H3O2. And say I add some strong base, so something with OH minus in it, maybe sodium hydroxide. <clears throat> well, hydroxide isn't actually in this reaction, but we know that hydroxide neutralizes acid. So if I add a base in, it's going to neutralize that acid. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to neutralize this, neutralize some, or it's going to take some out, okay? and so it's going to shift back the other way. So Le Chatelier's principle comes into play. This is called common ion effects. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start with other things in the initial spots. Okay, So not just zeros on one side. All right, so I am going to go through multiple examples here. Um, I'll have you do some by yourself. I will have you follow through some with me. Okay, so example number 13, what is the pH of a solution made by adding 10 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl to 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar HC2H3O2 or acetic acid? So anytime you have a problem and you think about what is in this solution, what affects the pH? Well, I have hydrochloric acid, strong acid. I have acetic acid, weak acid, weak acid strong acid. Now, I told you before, this is really the only one that's going to affect the pH. Now, if you want to do an ice table to double check that, um, we'll do that just to kind of prove it to you, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm first, I'm just going to focus on the HCl. That's the only one that's really going to affect the pH. Since I'm just going to focus on the hydrochloric acid, I want to find out how much H plus is in there. Now, I need to do this because H plus is the only thing that affects the pH, but I can't just take the negative log of 0.2 um, because I actually have 20 milliliters total once I add these together instead of just 10. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to do 0 0.010 times 0 0.20 to tell me I have 0 0.002 moles of H plus. Okay, all together now after these have been added together, I actually have a 0 0.020 liter solution which gives me a concentration of 0 0.10 molar H+. Plus. Okay, so I take the negative log of that, pH ends up being 1. Okay, very acidic. Now, I'm going to show you, kind of prove it to you, that you really only need to focus on the strong acid. I'm, so if I have acetic acid in here, and then I'm going to put something into my uh, initial, indicating that I already have H+, plus in there. All right, so H, C2, H3, O2. Um, I'm just going to do it this way for now, H+, plus, because remember, we don't actually care about the water, okay, like this. I got my M, a C, and my E. So initially, I have 0 0.10 molar of this. I have 0 0.10 molar of this. Oh, no, this one should be 0 0.05. Okay, so um, the reason I wrote 0 0.10 that one should be 0 0.05, um, is because, again, these are being diluted, right? I have 20 milliliters total. So I really just did a quick M1V1 equals M2V2 in my head. Um, I do uh, essentially divide it by two, divide the concentration by two. So instead of being 0.2 molar HCl, I have 0.1. Instead of being 0.1 molar acetic acid, I have 0.05, all right? Um, ask me if you have a question about that. Now, I didn't have any of that in there to begin with. Okay, so I just put in what I added. Now, if you're like, I don't know which way this is going to shift. Well, of course, it has to shift to the left because you can't end up with a negative concentration of anything. So if you have a zero somewhere, it has to shift that way. So that means I'm going to make products. So it's going to be just like usual, minus x plus x plus x, 0 0.05 minus x, 0 0.10 plus x, and x. 
Okay, now this is the Ka equation for acetic acid. So Ka for acetic acid, I look it up. It's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I'm going to set up my ice table. So product, so this one's going to be 0.10 plus x times x over 0 0.05 minus x. Yes, you can drop the minus x and that plus x. All right, go ahead and solve for x. You're going to get that x is 9 times 10 to the negative 6, 9.9 maybe. Um, and so what I'm going to do is actually plug that back in because this is all I care about, right, in the ice table. I want this value right here because that's going to tell me the pH. So if you plug this back in, look at those numbers, 9 times 10 to the negative 6. That is a very, very, very small number, right? 0.00000. 000 9. Okay, that's not really going to affect 0 0.10 very much at all. So if you add that in and then take the negative log, you end up still with a pH of 1. Okay, so you're welcome to do the whole ice table. Make sure, double check, but the strong acid kind of dominates. So you can just do what I did over here on the right side to begin with. Okay, so that was that first type of problem when you have a weak acid and a strong acid. Okay, um, example number 14 says, what is the pH of a solution made by adding, let's see, I've got acetic acid and NaC2H3O2. So first I'm gonna look at these compounds and be like, all right, what do I have going on? Well, I have a weak acid and I have its conjugate base. Okay, notice that's part of the weak acid, so that's its conjugate. So I'm gonna make my equation, C2H3O2, and my little arrows, H plus and c 2 h 3 O2 minus C E. Okay, so now this time I am starting with something under HC2H3O2 here, and I'm starting with something here because I added those in. I do, did not add in any of that. Okay, so I'm going to actually work this out for you on the right side so you can see how I got the um, con initial concentrations. All right, so I'm going to look at this one first, my weak acid. Okay, I'm going to do an M1V1 equals M2V2 because, again, when you add it, now my new volume is actually, this is 20 milliliters again, so it does change the concentration. So I would do M1.20 times 10 milliliters equals my new M2 times, now I have 20 milliliters, and I end up with this molarity being, what do I have? to do point one zero or essentially half of what it started with okay i would do the same thing so this one goes this number that i just calculated goes here okay i would do the same thing with my conjugate base do an m1v1 equals m2v2 with that guy so 0 0.10 times 10 equals m2 times 20 m2 of this one is half of what it originally was you do not have to show all this work 0 0.05 so that one goes here Okay. If I doubled the volume, I just half the concentration. So this is what I'm starting with. So it has to go to the right because I got a zero over there. So this is minus x plus x plus x, 0 0.10 minus x, x 0 0.05 plus x. Awesome. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I've got Ka equals x times 0 0.05 plus x over 0 0.10 minus x. Okay, solve for x. Again, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to drop this. So it's really 0.05x over 0.1. That's a really easy calculation. My x value is 3.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. Oh, I forgot to write what ka was. Um, I used that same ka value, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth to actually find this. Now, looking for pH, right? So I need this value here. x is that. So the negative log of that value, 3.6 times 10 to the negative fifth, is 4.44. Okay, that would be my concentration. All right. So um, if you're getting to the end and you're like, does my answer make sense? Always ask yourself this question, right? It is acidic, okay? I have an acid and it's conjugate base, and I do have more acid than base, right? I had 0.2 molar acetic acid. I had 0.1 molar of the conjugate base. So it should still be acidic, which it is. So that answer does make sense. It's not as, as acidic as it would be if it was just acetic acid. Okay, so 4.44 is a little bit higher um, of an acidic pH. So make sure your answer makes sense. Um, if you have questions on where any of those came from, please let me know. Um, but what I would actually like you to do is pause the video here. Try example number 15. 
Okay, and then come back, or if you get stuck, come back. Okay, so I'm going to talk through this one. Um, it's just the same as what we di just did, except this is a base, right? NH3 ammonia is a base. So I wrote the equation for what happens when NH3 is in a solution. Um, and then I noticed that NH4 plus is the conjugate acid. So essentially, I started with some NH3 and I started with some NH4 plus. So all I did was plug in those. Remember, they have to be the diluted concentration. So I did have to do a quick M1 V1 equals M2 V2. Or if I look at my numbers, let's see, I essentially diluted it one by a third and one by two thirds. Um, but I didn't show the work for that. So let me know if you have questions on that. Minus X plus X plus X, plugged everything in. KB, this is a KB equation. So KB for this is 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. Plugged everything in, solve for X. X is my OH minus concentration right here. So pOH is negative log of 3.57 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is 4.45. So pH plus 9.55. Okay, so this was a common ion one, or it was a weak base with its conjugate acid. Okay, now example number 16 says, what is the pH of a solution made by adding 20 milliliters of, okay, look at that, so weak acid, and sodium hydroxide. That is a strong base. Okay, so what happens when you add a strong base to a weak acid? Well, some of the base is going to neutralize some of the acid, okay? So you have to take that into account first. And anytime we had neutralization before, when we were trying to find the pH, we had to do a BCA table first. You have to figure out how much was neutralized before you can find the pH. So we're going to figure out how much was neutralized, and then we can do an ice table for the pH. So yes, this is a lot of work, but one, you have to do the neutralization. I'm just going to write neutralize. And two, you have to do the ice because it is a weak acid. All right. So neutralization. What is the neutralization equation? Well, I have the strong base. Now, the hydro the sodium doesn't do anything. So it's really just that the OH minus is going to neutralize some of this acid. Okay, neutralization, BCA table, straightforward arrow, completely neutralizes it. This is not an equilibrium, all right? So that's going to neutralize some of it. I'm going to get some water and C2H3O2 minus, all right? So I'm going to do a BC. A, remember these have to be in moles. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the moles of this. So just the milliliters times the molarity or the liters times the molarity. So I have 0 0.001 moles of this, 0 0.002 moles of this. Okay, none of these yet. I'm just talking about the neutralization. All right. Um, now you should be able to look at this and be like, well, I'm going to run out of hydroxide and I'm going to have leftover weak acid, which is generally going to be the case. Okay, so I know how much is going to be left over. It's really going to be 0.001 of HC2H3O2. But I'm going to do the whole table just in case you can't tell. Okay, um, so minus X, minus X, plus X, plus X. So this is 0 0.001 minus X, 0 0.002 minus X, X, and X. Oh, we don't care about Y. Okay, so I should look at this and be like, well, this one's going to run out. Okay, so that one's zero, uh, which means X is 0 0.001. So I can plug that in whoop, right there and get that I have 0 0.001 left over. Now I also have 0 0.001 over here. That's why it's a good, good idea to make the whole table because now I have this many moles of acid. I have this many moles of the conjugate base and I have to put both of those values into my ice table. Okay, so first we neutralize with a BCA. Then we ice with whatever's in there. So I have that acid in there, H, C2, H3, O2. Okay, I'm writing my Ka equation. Do, do, C2, H3, O2 minus. Now, remember, this has to be in molarity. Okay, so I can't just copy those 0.01s down. I do have to find out their molarities. So I'm going to put each of those over however many total volume I have, which is 30 milliliters. So I didn't even calculate it out. I'm just going to put 0 0.001 over 0 0.03. This one is 0 0.001 over 0 0.03, and I have none of this. Okay, minus x, plus x, plus x, 0 0.0033 minus x, 
x point zero three three plus x. Okay, I do have, this is a Ka reaction, right? So I have the Ka value for this acid, which is 1.8 times sine of the negative fifth. So that's gonna be x times 0 0.033 plus x over 0 0.033 minus x. Let's go ahead and drop that x or plug this into your calculator. Simple algebra then gives you x is not a number that I wrote down, but then I plugged it in. That is this value. So then I can find that the pH was 4.74. Okay, does this answer make sense? Well, if I look at the questions above, we had 4.44 when I had a weak acid with its conjugate base. Well, if I neutralized some of it, we would think that it wouldn't be as acidic. Oops, not. I got 4.74 for my pH, and that makes sense.